Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedsp.net and in this last video from my current series about web application security, we are going to cover cross-site request forgery, which is a very important attack we need to defend from. So before we begin, I would like to tell you that if you're new around here, I upload uh, regularly advanced C-sharp lessons, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notifications on. Now let's talk about cross-site request forgery. Cross-site request forgery or CSRF or XSRF is a web security attack over the HTTP protocol allows executing unauthorized comments on behalf of some authorized user by using the cookies stored in the user browser. So the important part here is that the user has valid permissions to execute the requested command. For example, the user is locked in his uh, bank account and the attacker uses another website to send a request to his bank account, to the user's bank account, by using the user's cookies without the user understanding what is going on. And this way the attacker may use may have permissions without having the actual cookies in sp.net core there are built-in mechanisms to protect your application it is the mechanism automatically generates uh, a protection code but you need to add the defense either globally or manually to all the actions you want to protect these are the two attributes validate anti forgery token and auto validate anti forgery token. This is a scheme on how exactly the attacker uses this kind of attack. Victim logs into a bank account and receives a validation token or a cookie or anything like that. Then the attacker sends a forge request which uh, the server of the bank will not understand that it's coming from the attacker because the attacker will show a web page in which uh, the user may click a button in which the user uh, for example is shown some cute cat behind the scenes and the user will click on it the user has the cookie and the validation token stored on his uh, web browser so when the attacker sends a request to the bank website the user clicks and sends the request the browser sends the authentication cookie to the bank website and the bank website will not know that the user uh, is actually an attacker it's easier to show you a practical example of that so for example, uh, the attacker shows the user a malicious website on which there is a form. GoodBankingSite.com API account method post. There are hidden inputs, transaction amount, value withdraw, value any amount. And the user tries to click on the form without knowing that this form actually sends a valid request because the browser sees the URL here and sends all the cookies for this domain. So the user is the one who is clicking on the form but the attacker is hiding all that additional information. Even if the user recognizes the site is different or the site is uh, malicious, uh, she may still click on the button by mistake. So we need to secure our banking web server to make sure that if a request is coming from malicious website, the server will not allow that request. How to do that? Let's first see how we can forge some request. In the, in the demo code, I have a security controller, which has a cross-site request forgery view and this cross-site request forgery returns unauthorized if a cookie is not present like this. So if the attacker doesn't have the cookie he will not be able to see the content. 
On the HTTP post, we receive some name and value and again validate the cookies. If the cookie is not present, we will return an authorize. Otherwise, we are going to add a value to the database. So, if we run the website, and before I show you the website, I'm going to show you where you can find the code. It's available on my GitHub profile. The GitHub profile is uh, Ivaio Kenov. Hit repositories, write down TV, and this is the repository in which I'm uploading all the code from my YouTube channel. You can play with it, download it, whatever you like. It's free. I will appreciate if you give me a star. The, this particular demo is here, Web Application Security Considerations. Good. Now let's return here and let's go to the website. If I delete the cookies, I import a cookie. And if I try to hit that page, I will receive unauthorized. Now let's get the cookie by hitting here. And then now I have authorized because now I get the cookie and I can create data uh, as a normal user. Now how to make a fake website which will send the data with the user's cookie. Well, it's very easy. Here it is. In the index.html page, what we can do is we can load an iframe with, without any width and height. We can also try to sneak some GET requests by adding an image, because this image will send a GET request to the, uh, to the actual web server and if cookies are present they will be sent to but nevertheless if we have an iframe and the iframe just needs to have this try to call the external server which is the other application and call the security create data value send the post method with the hacked name and hacked value so try to get Without authorizing, try to send and save data and on document ready, we just get the form and submit it. So the user will be told, hey, look at this cute puppy. Let me start this instance too. Hey, look at this cute puppy. And the user will try to see the puppy without understanding that behind the scenes, the this JavaScript executed a network call. Here it is. It's not a puppy, it's a cat actually. But this JavaScript behind the scenes actually called create data value and sent the hacked name and hacked value. Because in my browser I have the cookie to authorize the request here it is. I'm currently authorized because my browser stores the cookie. Here it is. And when an attacker sends me, hey, look at this cute cat, behind the scenes he may be executing the iframe, calling the post request on the server, and the server doesn't understand that this post request is coming from another site. So what will happen, we will have in the database the hacked values. So essentially an attacker managed to get and send information which is for authorized users only by making the user click a cat image. How to protect ourselves? The protection is simple, just add validate anti-forgery token on your actions or add auto-validate anti-forgery token in your uh, configuration.
like this. This will defend you globally and all your forms will be validated against this attack. How the protection works? The protection is that the form tag in uh, the form tag in sp.net core automatically generates a random string for the form and like this here it is request verification token this is automatically generated and it's this is the random string here the server knows the random string and if the server doesn't receive the random string with the post request now uh, when I use the normal website as a normal user the create data value will send the request verification token and this attribute we put here validated it and said yeah the token is valid let's continue with the action but if an attacker tries to send the request he will not have this random string he will not have it because uh, there is no way he will know about it there is no way he will know what kind of random string to send so essentially he can try to send only the normal data and if our app is secured against the and with an anti forgery token then the request will not the request will fail here it is we see that we receive uh, some bad request because we don't send the request forgery token and uh, there is no response so if I go here I will see that no additional hacked value was added because my app is now secured good that's essentially cross-site request forgery the important rule here is never forget the validate anti-forgery token attribute on your post requests or just add it globally like here this will protect your app from this kind of attack which essentially means that an attacker can use a user's cookie to send requests without the user actually knowing these requests are occurring so next time you see a cute cat always question the intent of the website good guys thank you for being with me and i hope you find this video lesson useful if you're interested in additional exclusive video content you may check my patreon uh, where i every month i upload advanced concept of c -sharp web development for example optimizing web applications for performance databases indexes made simple data structure efficiency and more thank you for your consideration and if you like this video hit the thumbs up button thank you and bye